The Last of Us Part 2 is a very intense game. But after two playthroughs, one of which was on the Survivor difficulty, I decided it wasn't enough. Using a slew of difficulty settings and HUD options, I set out to make the most intense post-post-apocalyptic experience possible. Here's everything I did and exactly how it turned out. <laughs> So before I begin, a few disclaimers. One, there will be absolutely no story spoilers in this video. That said, I'll be showing footage from a bunch of different locations, so if you haven't played The Last of Us Part 2 and you wanna go in blind, bookmark this video and come back later. Two, I do not recommend trying this until you've completed the game at least once. A new game plus save should make this slightly easier. Three, I feel like I have to say this anytime I make a video about difficulty, but play the game however you'd like. Think of this video as a weird experiment where I punish myself and you get to watch. Sounds like a blast, right? All right, so with that out of the way, let's start with difficulty. When you select New Game Plus from the main menu, you'll be greeted with five difficulty options and a Custom Plus difficulty setting. The first thing you'll notice is that all difficulties in New Game Plus are harder than the original settings by default. Instead of picking Survivor Plus though, I'm gonna choose Custom Plus. This will allow me to tweak almost all the difficulty settings right from the get-go. I decided to set almost everything to Survivor Plus in the name of science. However, I think there are a few difficulty options we can manipulate here and there and still retain an intense experience, so I'm going to break down my reasoning behind each setting. The first option titled player is self-explanatory. This largely determines how much damage Ellie can take. I crank this up to survivor because I think the player needs to be fragile for this to really work. After all, most people can only really take one bullet before they die or bleed out. <laughs> I also turned enemies up to Survivor Plus because the AI can be rather dumb otherwise. This will hopefully force us to think critically before killing an enemy or alerting a guard. Like enemies, I also set stealth to Survivor Plus because once again the enemies can be kinda clueless by design. <laughs> Next, resources. I turn this up to Survivor Plus as well because I'd imagine that most, if not all the areas that Ellie visits have been picked clean. Now, the allies difficulty option is one I think we can play with. The lower difficulty you pick, the more aggressive your companions will be. I ended up choosing moderate. Yes, this will make things easier, but I actually kind of find it unrealistic when my AI buddies aren't doing shit. Dina grew up in this world, so she should be as capable as Ellie. Now that that's taken care of, let's head to the options menu and tweak the HUD. For gameplay, I turn everything off except the weapon cross. Reticles, damage indicators, awareness indicators, hit markers, health and weapon bars, all gone. As I'm writing this, I already know that turning off reticles entirely is a mistake, but what the hell. You guys probably want to see me suffer anyway. If you do decide to try this at home, I think it's important to have the weapon and ammo display turned off though because it forces you to count your bullets, which adds a fun little deadly minigame. Also, running out of ammo in the middle of a firefight and hearing a click is not only exhilarating, but if an enemy hears it, they will rush you. It's neat and also terrifying. As for notifications, I turned everything off except the pickup and interaction prompts because those can be easy to miss otherwise. After tweaking the HUD and difficulty, the only thing missing is the ability to turn off listen mode. If we're trying to make this game as intense as possible, then I don't think Ellie should have an ability that lets her see through walls. If I had to guess, I'd say that if Naughty Dog decides to add a grounded mode difficulty setting like they did with the original, it will probably do away with listen mode. But in the meantime, I'm just going to refrain from holding R1. Now, it's time to play. To be honest, the first few hours of this game weren't all that hard, even with all the absurd restrictions I put on myself. This shouldn't be all that surprising since it's mostly just tutorial sections with smaller stealth-focused encounters. Most of the infected can be taken out silently, and if you startle them, their groups are usually pretty small. However, there are two things that concerned me. Nearly every drawer I opened was empty, and lining up headshots without a reticle ain't easy. When I did a grounded playthrough of the first Last of Us, headshots were crucial because that was the only way you could take down an enemy in one shot, and most of the time you only had a bullet or two to spare. If I can't land headshots confidently with the few bullets I have, then my unscoped guns will truly be a last resort. Fortunately, because I've played through the game three times now, I have upgraded all my guns to completion and unlocked every single perk. This should hopefully give me a bit of an edge. 
After completing the tutorial and the first few encounters, I arrived in downtown Seattle. This is where things got a bit more interesting. While most of these encounters are still fairly simple, it was a bit more dynamic. Not only did I have more tools and weapons at my disposal, but I could approach most of these scenarios in different ways. That being said, I mostly leaned towards the stealthy approach, taking out enemies as quietly as I could. If I got noticed, then I'd run, saving my precious bullets for when an infected got close enough for me to confidently shoot. This actually ended up working better than expected for two reasons. First, it was unsurprisingly much easier to line up headshots when enemies were close. Second, if I did land a body shot, I could follow up with a melee attack to get the kill. Unfortunately, if I missed the shot, it usually meant I was dead. Most of these encounters ended up being a tense and beautiful mess. The moment I'd get spotted, I'd have a split second to react and form a plan. What do I have, what can I use, and how can I expend the least amount of materials possible? It's these moments that make The Last of Us Part 2's combat feel like a frantic violent puzzle than a cinematic zombie action game. Of course this is The Last of Us, so the action is still cinematic as heck and zombie as heck. But boy does it really get your heart pumping. There's also an added layer of dread after each successful combat encounter knowing that you have less resources and ammo for the next fight. I've never been more mad at myself for missing a shot than when I miss a shot in this game. Survivor mode also makes you appreciate bricks and bottles so much more. Not only are they good for distracting enemies, but if you hit an enemy with a brick or a bottle, they stagger, serving them up for an easy kill. I always made sure I had a brick or bottle to spare. Now dealing with the infected is one thing, but the WLF requires a totally different approach. After the downtown Seattle section, you are greeted not so pleasantly by a raider faction known as the WLF or Wolves. The important thing to know here is that they have guns and much better aim than I do. Without a reticle, landing headshots or even just regular shots at a distance is basically impossible. Anyway, guns are pretty much useless on the WLF unless you get close, which is tough to do, or if they are scoped. Rifle ammo in this playthrough is probably the most valuable ammo type because it's the only weapon I can use accurately. Oh, also, the bow is absolutely useless without a reticle. Like, seriously, throw it in the trash because you don't need it. The other thing I noticed with the WLF is that they are a lot more aggressive on this difficulty setting. A lot of people were saying that the AI in this game is dumb, and I see why many would think that. Sure, they don't always respond appropriately during stealth sections, but when they know where you are, they are aggressive as heck. They flanked me nearly every chance they got. You can't really stay behind cover and pick off enemies from afar either, even if you're much smarter than me and leave the reticle on, because enemies will constantly pressure and flank you. Honestly, the aggressive AI is probably one of my favorite things about the Survivor difficulty. Every single enemy feels like a threat, and if you're outnumbered, which is most of the time, you really have to strategize and plan your moves in only a few seconds. And just like the first game, if you get overwhelmed, running is a totally viable strategy. You still have to be strategic though. Enemies have pinpoint accuracy, and Ellie can't take that many hits. This means that you need to know where you plan on running to and how much cover you'll have. Typically, I'd try to quietly take out as many WFs as I could, and when things went to shit, I'd just run. It hurts knowing that you may have left behind important resources that could help you with the next encounter, but sometimes running was my only option. But I think that's the beautiful thing about playing on Survivor. You're forced to make dozens of small decisions every few minutes that could greatly impact your next encounter and the rest of your playthrough. Do you craft a Molotov or a first aid kit? Should you use a bullet on this guy or should you sneak around him? On the easier difficulties, you don't really have to think about these things because resources are common and you can kill most enemies with ease. While I don't think a brutal experience like this one is necessary to enjoy The Last of Us Part 2, I do think it creates an interesting challenge that forces the player to make tough gameplay decisions that could have interesting repercussions later down the road. If you're looking for an excuse to do another playthrough, I recommend giving this a shot. Also, f the bloater fight on Survivor and the other fight in the hospital in the second half. You either know exactly what I'm talking about or you'll know very soon.